Yeah, I know. Baker's a Panther. Congratulations. Kind of funny, Robbie Anderson's now trying to cover up his tracks for when he was dissing Baker when they were trying to get him a couple months ago. He was saying that he was defending Sam Darnold as his quarterback at the time, even though Robbie was threatening to retire if he kept Sam. That man's just caught in a pinch right now, and he doesn't know what to do. He's a clown. Anyway, before we get into the video today, which is going to be a fantasy football mock draft, I have been requested nonstop, basically, to play Fall Guys. I don't know what the game is. I've never touched it. But I'm wondering if I should play it on this channel or my extra, because when I tend to play non-sports related games on this channel, the children start crying in the comments. So if this video gets 4,000 likes by 8 a.m. tomorrow, I will play Fall Guys on my main for Friday's video. Anyway, alright, welcome to today's video, which like I just said, it is going to be a fantasy football mock draft. This has been requested by a few of you guys as well, but it's something that I should do because I haven't done anything fantasy related in a very long time. I do want to point out a couple things before we get into it. One, it's going to be 12 spots because all my leagues are 12 spots, so that's what I'm doing. Two, we're going to base this off of PPR, point per reception, which means you get a point per reception. The reason I do that over standard is because it's higher scoring games. I think they're much more entertaining and players are much more valuable. Three, this is my opinions and it can easily change because things tend to always get hectic around drafting season and fantasy. So that's the layout of what we're doing before we hop into the video, guys. Head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. Let's get into our fantasy football mock draft. <laughs> All right, so before we dig into the list with our first overall pick, I want to point out a few don'ts for anybody who's new to fantasy football. One, don't draft a quarterback in the first round. Don't ever fucking do it. Two, don't draft your favorite player because they're your favorite player. You're going to lose and you're pissing money away. Three, understand where your spot is in the snake draft order. That is going to help you crucially in planning what your team can look like. However, if you have the number one first overall pick in this year's draft, who are you taking? If it's me, I'm taking Jonathan Taylor. Pretty sure he was the highest scoring fantasy running back last year. He doesn't miss time. He doesn't get hurt. I believe that is going to still remain a run first offense. Matt Ryan going there is great, but it shouldn't mess with Jonathan Taylor's production at all. Now, this being a PPR league, I see people could be like, well, you want a reception-based running back? That's true. But even those guys weren't putting up the points that JT was putting up last year. I think he's just getting started. I think he is going to be even better for fantasy, and I would take him with the number one overall pick. Also, please understand, fantasy football in the NFL, two different worlds. All right, and pick number two, it is going to be the king, Derrick Henry. Honestly, if he wouldn't have gotten hurt last year, I'd probably be taking him number one. I think I said possibly him number one last year as my pick too. He's just like Jonathan Taylor, although I think Derrick Henry would have scored more if he would have remained healthy. It's just coming off of a foot injury like that, we don't know what we're doing. I'm going to take safe Jonathan Taylor over scared Derrick Henry as of now. Look at the Titans team. Look at their quarterback situation. They want to use Malik Willis. I think they're kind of getting over Ryan Tannehill. They don't have A.J. Brown anymore. They have Robert Woods coming off of an ACL injury. Derrick Henry is going to be pounding the rock from start to finish every goddamn game. He's a great guy to have in fantasy because not only is he going to get you probably around 100 yards, which is 10 fantasy points a game, he is going to get you between one and three touchdowns a game too. I think you'd be silly to be at pick number two and leave Derrick Henry hanging if he was there. And moving on to number three, I would now take Austin Eckler. Honestly, if someone picked him first overall, I don't think that it would be the most questionable thing I've ever seen. You're really riding on him staying healthy because if he gets hurt, you are going to be crippled. But it seems like every single game that Austin Eckler is playing, fantasy football, you're racking 25 points minimum. That's an exaggeration, but you're in the double digits safely every single game. The thing about Austin Eckler is he's a receiving running back, kind of like I was previously just talking about. So he's going to get points for every reception he gets. He's going to get points for every receiving touchdown, for every receiving yard. And then he's going to get points for every single rushing yard. He's going to get points for every single rushing touchdown. He doesn't get hurt. Their offensive scheme isn't going to change. He is going to continue the train he has been running on. Like I said, realistically, he could be a number one overall pick. I would take Eckler at three. All right, and number four, I'm going to go ahead and take the hometown hero, Delvin Cook. He is not only one of the most consistent and highest scoring fantasy running backs every year, but he's getting an increased receiving role this year. So in a PPR league, he is going to skyrocket. 
It's almost safe to assume Delvin Cook is going to miss a game or two a year, honestly. So you're probably going to have to have a handcuff and draft Madison at some point. But even then, I would say you're set in stone. So at pick number four, especially with his increased workload that's supposed to be coming, I'm going to roll with the chef. All right, and moving on to number five, we've got another Viking, Justin Jefferson. Simply put, I think he's going to be the best receiver in the league this year. I think he's going to do better than Cup. I think he's going to do better than Adams. I think he's going to do better than Chase. He has been in the league for two years. The first year was elite. The second year was uber elite. He had 108 receptions last year. That's 108 fantasy points right there, not coning anything else. Now I get it. Cooper Cup can do this. Jamar Chase can do this. Anybody can do what I'm saying Jefferson's been doing. I think from the bottom bottom of my heart he will be on top he is going to improve and he's going to do even better therefore I would take him at pick number five crazy the Vikings have two of the highest scoring fantasy players they do every year it's just that this year I think you're gonna have two top 10 players and moving on to pick number six we've got Joe Mixon <laughs> I'm taking him are you fucking kidding me he showed last year who he's gonna be going forward they got a better O-line he's protected his quarterback's protected he can catch the ball he can run the ball he can do both at an elite level 16 total touchdowns and 1500 total yards last year and the thing I like about Joe Mixon, the reason I think he has more upside than someone on his team like Jamar Chase, is because he's a dual role, he's a dual threat, he has more than one opportunity to hit a team. Jamar Chase gets locked up receiving, you know, that's, that's kind of it. Joe Mixon can be doing anything at any time. I would take him at number six. Moving on, we got pick number seven, and here he is, Christian McCaffrey. Stop screaming now. I understand it's personal preference, and I'm not even going to kid you guys. I don't even think I would actually take him here. I'm just saying it so the comments will leave me the fuck alone. You don't understand the risk you are putting if you take this son of a bitch. I went through it last year. Yes, if he plays, he's a guaranteed fucking locked 20 points a game. It is elite. It is magnificent. It is unlike anything you can ever experience. But the overwhelming 75% chance that he is going to get fucking murdered every time he gets on the field isn't worth this high of a draft pick. Yeah, the upside on Christian McCaffrey's awesome, man. He's elite. He's the best runner, the best catcher in the game. Use your pick on him. Get him because you better pray to fucking God he doesn't get hurt. Oh, I hate that son of a bitch. But if he doesn't get hurt and your luck pays off, he will single-handedly probably walk you into the playoffs. All right, and pick number eight, I would take Cooper Cup. Yeah, I think he's going to be great. He's not going to be any worse than he was. I mean, his stats might not match it, but the talent will be there. I think Matt Stafford's going to target the hell out of him, although he has Allen Robinson to use. They're on a great team. They've got a great coach. Everything's looking bright. That's pretty much all I've got to say about Cooper Cup. The only reason I have him at eight is because, one, I don't think he'll be as good as Jefferson, and two, in fantasy football, I believe running backs are arguably the most important position by a long shot. And moving on to number nine, I don't see this guy on a lot of people's lists, and I don't really understand it. I'm going to go with Elvin Kamara. Yeah, last year he was kind of disappointing, and he got hurt, and a lot of these fucking guys that I'm naming do get hurt every year. But Elvin Kamara, healthy? What? One of the better receiving backs in the game. A fantasy monster. You get up to the one yard line, there is a 98% chance that Elvin Kamara is going to score that touchdown in some way, shape, or form. I think he's going to come back healthy. I think the Saints are going to be fine. Their team looks tremendous compared to the shambles that it was pretty much left in. I don't think that it's smart to write off Elvin Kamara, especially dropping him out of the first round. If I had picked number nine and I saw him sitting there, I think that I would absolutely take him without a doubt in my mind. Also, I want to point out quick, people are probably wondering where like Nick Chubb and stuff is. Like I said, fantasy's different, guys. Nick Chubb has Kareem Hunt. They split a lot more than a lot of these running backs do. Nick Chubb is great, but fantasy, he's probably a second round guy. Maybe late first. Up next at pick number 10, now I would take Jamar Chase. I think that him and Burrow are going to develop more chemistry literally as the games go on. And I think with that being said, he is going to get more receptions, which in the eyes of fantasy football, that is just money. He was already one of, if not the highest scoring receivers last year because he had 1,400 yards and 13 touchdowns on 81 receptions. You just continue to play, you're going to get more action. And more action than the stats I just named off of is damn near unthinkable. So yeah, I would take Jamar Chase at number 10. 
Moving on, number 11. Uh, this one I'm probably gonna get some shit for, but I'm taking Najee Harris. He was incredible last year for fantasy, dude. There was a game where he had like 12 receptions. That was 12 points alone. <laughs> he can catch, he can run, he's a big guy. The only thing you really gotta worry about is his O-line. Put on some weight. I don't look at that as slowing him down. I look at it as beefing him up. If I was in the very end of the first round and I saw a dual receiving back like Najee Harris looking me in the face, I'm gonna absolutely take him. Here's his stats broken down in fantasy terms last year. 1,200 yards, that's 100 120 points. Seven touchdowns, that's 42 points. 74 receptions, that's 74 more points. Three receiving touchdowns, that's 18 more points. See where I'm coming from, dude? That shit adds up for those running backs. And number 12, the final pick from round one. Who's it gonna be? Another guy I'm probably gonna get shit for, but give me Aaron Jones. I think without Devonta Adams, without any receiving help there, he is gonna have to step up. He's gonna play a little bit of running back, but it's gonna mainly be handed off to A.J. Dillon. But Aaron Jones will be that receiving back he's been the last couple years, just at a much more expanded workload level. He's got one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. He's got a precise passer. Aaron Jones, to me, this year is money, and I would pick him at number 12. All right, guys, and that is going to be all for my first attempt at a fantasy mock draft this season. If you guys like this video, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. I do my best to post every single day. If you guys want to see me play Fall Guys, smash the like button. With that being said, I'm going to edit this so you guys can watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Thursday, and as always, I will see you the next time I upload.